So it looks like rumors and leaks for AMD's next generation mid-range GPUs are starting to surface and they look quite enticing. But how will they fare against the competition? Well, let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. We're still fresh off the RX 6800 and 6800 XT releases, but it seems like the GPU hardware releases aren't done just quite yet. As it looks like rumors for AMD's upcoming mid-range GPUs for the RX 6000 series are starting to surface, implying they might be right around the corner, and from the leaks, they seem to be quite intriguing. So let's get right into the leaks and then we'll discuss and I'll give you guys my thoughts and what I think about all of it. This information comes from Patrick Schur on Twitter who is a known hardware leaker and their track record has been pretty spot on for both AMD and Nvidia cards. In this tweet they mentioned two graphics cards based on Navi 22. The first one is Navi 22 XT where the XT suffix generally alludes to the larger chip which makes sense in this case as this graphics card will have a TGP of around 186 to 211 watts. Not something that's been finalized. The GPU will most likely be the RX 6700 XT, the successor to the previous generation RX 5700 XT. The 6700 XT was also leaked a while back, back in September actually, where this card was spotted in a Linux kernel update sporting 40 compute units, which if you compare that to the RX 5700 XT, it's the exact same amount. The second GPU, which is Navi 22 XTL, the smaller chip, and will be known as the RX 6700 and will have a TGP of around 146 to 156 watts and i'm thinking since the other gpu had 40 compute units then this one will probably be a 36 compute unit gpu just as the 5700 non-xt did what's also noteworthy is that they mentioned that both gpus will have a 12 gigabyte memory buffer which will be a great selling point in favor of amd as this will be another segment where they're going to have options with more vram than their competitor but it looks like that's all the information they had to give for now but i'm sure the leaks aren't done just quite yet now, going back to the amount of compute units, I was a bit surprised to see that the RX 6700 XT would only have 40 compute units, because the RX 6800, the GPU which is directly on top of it in the GPU hierarchy, has 60 compute units, so there's going to be this large gap between the two GPUs, and this will for, for sure impact performance hierarchy and will also put quite the emphasis on the pricing of the cards. It's interesting because if we take a look at the Xbox Series X, the GPU in that console, also powered by the RDNA 2 architecture, is sporting a 52 compute unit GPU. Therefore, I thought that if we see a 6700 XT, it will probably have the same amount, if not lower than probably around 48. With 40 compute units, the 6700 XT and the 6700 as that too will have the same amount of compute units as its successor. We'll only see performance gains from architectural improvements of RDNA 2, higher clock speeds, and better power efficiency. The RX 6800 in more GPU bound scenarios is about 6 to 8% faster than the $500 RTX 3070 in terms of raw traditional rasterization performance but also costs $580, an $80 difference or 16%. Considering that the 5700 XT had an MSRP of $399, I'm expecting AMD will probably price the card at the same price point. I don't think they should price it at $450 because at that point people will just say, hey, for $50 bucks more, I can get myself an RTX 3070 and that will for sure be faster as well. I don't think the RX 6700 XT will beat the 3070, which was as fast as a 2080 Ti, but I'm thinking it will probably be anywhere from um, 8 to 10 percent slower which definitely isn't bad then that would put the 6700 xt in between a 2080 super and 2080 ti which for 400 dollars doesn't seem like a bad deal but any more than that and i don't think they will appeal a lot to gamers in the gpu market compared to the competition also if you guys saw my previous video where i compared the rx 6800 xt against the rtx 3080 to help you guys decide which one to buy there were a lot of other factors involved that made nvidia more appealing such as better ray tracing performance dlss software features cuda and more also this is just another area where or there would be a huge gap leaving Nvidia uncontested at that $500 mark but who knows unless AMD can pull a rabbit out of their hat and the 6700 XT for the most part matches or trails the 3070 right behind it then I'm sure Nvidia will be just fine. Now the 3070 wasn't the card AMD was targeting with these mid-range options as Nvidia will be preparing x60 class cards in that $300 to $400 price point. These are the GPUs that AMD will have to ensure they beat if they want to dominate that mid-range market 
Apart from the entry level and budget category, the mid-range market is the second biggest market when it comes to PC gamers looking for graphics cards, but based on the rumors and leaks we've seen so far, the options look like they'll be packing quite a bit of performance. Hypothetically speaking, if the X60 class cards, the top end model can trail the RTX 3070 and come in at around that $400 price point, AMD will have their work cut out for them. But this is where that 12GB VRAM factory comes in as a better selling point as I know a lot of you guys are concerned with how long the lower amount of memory buffers will last. We have seen some games out there that are utilizing close to that and games like Doom Eternal for example if you max out everything can easily exceed that and it's concerning because longevity wise how long can these cards with 8 gigabytes be viable until you have to start looking into upgrading again thanks to the lower memory buffer. To be fair that's more of a conversation for 4k gaming as these cards will be targeted towards 1440p and 1080p resolutions and they should be just fine in regards to that for the foreseeable future until you know the lifetime of these cards cards until this generation is relevant. I won't be expecting people to come out and say that, hey, my RTX 3070 or RTX 3060 just isn't cutting it. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out and see what AMD does in the segment of the market and how they'll position the 6700 and 6700 XT. There'll be more information and leaks to come, so keep your eyes peeled. Also, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. Stay tuned as I am working on an exciting review that should come out in the near future if everything goes as planned. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.